All right, so to get started, you want to go over to the computer window. And we'll open up the Z drive again. <coughs> drive Z. Open up then uh, the folder uh, Campus WordPress 1. Really? Um, network drives. Thank you. So you're going to open Classroom Drive Z, and then you can go over to my folder, Campus WordPress One. Z as in Z. Z as in Zorro. And then you'll open up uh, Campos WordPress 1. You'll see two folders in there. One is uh, dated uh, two weeks ago and one is dated last week. So what I accomplished uh, two weeks ago is there and what we accomplished last week is there. Uh, September 19th. So what you want to do is just drag from that folder onto your desktop. Drag the WordPress uh, September 19th folder to your desktop. So once you've dragged it to the desktop, you can close that window. You should have a folder on your desktop called WordPress 2014-919. So that was last week's project. We're gonna we're gonna use that as our starting point. Uh, we need to change its name, however, uh, simply to WordPress. So if you click on the name, click on the name once, it should then let you rename it, and we'll just call it WordPress. Technically, the name doesn't matter, but we've been using the term WordPress for our folder the whole, uh, the whole semester, the whole class. So go ahead and change that name to WordPress. And then we need to put this into our WAMP folder. Now, when we did this last time, a lot of you did it no problem, and then some of you uh, at some point were tripped up. So remember to do it exactly as I'm telling you here. So you want to open up computer window again. And this time go to local disk C. C as in cat. So open up local disk C. And then open up the WAMP folder. And then open the www folder. So what you need to do is drag your WordPress folder from your desktop into your WW folder. You know you're putting it in the right place when this is what you see here, fav icon, index, etc. You're going to drag your WordPress folder into there. If you're putting it anywhere else, this will not work. So be sure you're putting the whole folder in there. Not the zip file, not the, uh, not the installer PHP file, mm -hmm. the whole folder. Okay, so I dragged my WordPress folder into the WW folder, and now we need to activate WAMP and start to set this up. So I put it in the folder. Question? Um, this is just a side edit to what you're saying. When I set up the uh, LA MAMP out of my Macintosh, MAMP, uh huh. I was asking. Do I have to put the WordPress in their folder because it's a different type of? It is a different structure, and on my Mac instructions, I say I think it says to put it into the HT Docs folder. Okay, 
Yeah, we did. I did that part, and then uh, so you're supposed to, you're supposed to put a WordPress folder inside there that's mm -hmm. already installed. If you already got a WordPress folder in there, that means you've already got Word, WordPress set up. You could put another folder, call it WordPress 2. Okay, so you have to, you have to download from, um, from WordPress.org? You know, well, if you do download it from WordPress.org, you're going to get the original, the original file without any of the work we've done. Okay. So if you want to start from scratch, you could. Oh, I see. Okay. Download. I was just trying to compare it to what we were trying to do in there. I am in part, I got lost. Um, yeah, um, when you could always bring your Mac, and we could try to, to look at it during lab times, but uh, it should be basically as, as how I have my instructions set up. Okay. You put the, the, the WordPress folder into your, in, into your htdocs folder okay. on, your, on your Mac. Okay, Thanks. Mm -hmm. I have my Mac laptop. Well, I wouldn't recommend that since it's your Mac, and why would he use your Mac for his work? Just so you can show me what you're doing. Okay. Sorry. Sure. Thanks. Okay. So um, here what we've got then is we've need, we need to run uh, WAMP. So on your desktop you should see the W, the purple W again, or uh, magenta. Uh, mine says start WAMP server. Yours probably just says WAMP server, so double click it. Remember, you don't get any feedback. Nothing happens on screen that says, congratulations, you're running WAMP. It happens on the bottom right of your screen, inside that double arrow. You should see the green W. And then once you see the green W, you want to click that and go to localhost. So once you see this, uh, this WAMP screen, then <coughs> we're ready to create the database and move forward. Does everyone see the, um, this WAMP server screen? You need some help? All right, so... Um, We need to create the database, and then uh, we can set up our site. So on the bottom, you'll see phpMyAdmin. Go ahead and click on that. Under Tools at the bottom left, phpMyAdmin. And so we've done this several times. It should be familiar now. Uh, you want to go up to the top where we've got Databases. Select databases. It asks for a database name and a good name for our WordPress site is WordPress. So make sure you type WordPress and then create. People seem to forget that step. Nothing happens until you click create. So type WordPress, click Create, and then on the left side you should see now all of your databases and we've currently got a WordPress database. Alright, so now up on the address bar, uh, delete that, and we're going to go to localhost slash WordPress. That's the folder that we put into the WW folder slash installer.php. When we create the duplicator archive, it always creates two files, installer.php and a zip file with your whole site. You never want to unzip that file. This installer will do it for us. So if this works, when you go to that address, <laughs> you'll see this duplicator screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do in this room because every time you turn off the computer, it forgets what you did. No, I mean at home. No, not at home. You just keep at it because uh, your computer doesn't reset like ours. Okay. Just. So you just type in local host slash WordPress and then That's right. All right, so does everyone see the duplicator installer screen? Question? 
My address right up to the time. Yeah, it's time to enter. Okay. question is uh, basically why do we need to do this again? Yes, uh, we need to do it again every time because the, these computers, they, uh, they forget everything that we did. Just because we created the database a moment ago doesn't mean that the site is ready. This is what actually resurrects the site and saves it into that database we just created. So that's what this whole screen is about. It needs a, we needed a database to store all of our files. We just created it a moment ago. And now on this duplicator screen, we're going to connect our new WordPress, or last week's WordPress, with our new database. So here under, under, under this screen, as we've done before, uh, host stays as localhost. Name, it says new or existing database name. We just created one called WordPress. Um, this username is root, and then the password is empty, it is nothing. Don't write anything there. To check if it works, click Test Connection. You should see a couple of messages that say Success. Does anyone see any fails? Alright, so if I see Success, I'm going to click close that and then at the bottom you will need to activate I have read all the warnings and notices and click run develop uh, run deployment So then you should get a screen that looks like this, <coughs> files in database, nothing, uh, we don't really need to change anything here, uh, so then run the update. So you want to run the update, and then we get to this here, uh, step three. Notice we had step one, step two, step three. So under test 
uh, step three test site, this is where we need to do these these couple of um, of things for our site to be fully uh, functional. We have these uh, permalinks and then file cleanup. Uh, so click on save permalinks. And we're going to log in. This, since this is my site, you're going to log in with the username and password I made. And what I have here is the username is admin, and the password is happy cat. No spaces. Lowercase. <coughs> What's that? Happy cat. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if that worked, it'll take you to this screen called Permalink Settings. So this is allow tracking do not allow tracking. What's that? So it's help improve WordPress, just do not allow tracking. If you get a little pop-up about help improve WordPress, I think WordPress SEO, uh, just say uh, do not allow. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that WordPress SEO plugin that we set up last time, and it just wants to track some anonymous statistics. You can let it if, if you want, but I, I usually click no. Um, so if it popped up for you, just click don't, do not allow. All right, so what this screen shows is uh, the basic uh, URL structure or permalinks of your site. And we talked about this last time that by default, our site will have these ugly address, these ugly, ugly URLs. It's going to be victorsbakery.com slash p equals 129 or victorsbakery.p equals 1526 they're just going to be the number of the of the file or the page a better permalink structure a, be a better address structure is the one called postname we won't activate that just yet however because we also need to make a change on WAMP in order for this to work uh, so we'll get back to this but uh, just make a note that eventually we want to have the post name as the uh, as the as our permalink structure, our address structure, but not just yet. So we'll leave it on default and we'll click Save Changes. So I didn't change anything under permalink settings, but go ahead and save. And if you notice, uh, we've got two tabs. I'm going to close this tab and go back to the WordPress uh, duplicator tab. So go back to your duplicator tab and, okay, step one, oh, yeah, step one here, that's done. Step two is done. Step three, we'll test the site in a moment. Step four, this is an important one. We need to clean up the existing files or else if they're still there, you could accidentally erase everything you've done so far and it goes back to this step when we resurrected everything. So select File Cleanup. It's going to confirm that. Are you sure you want to delete those all old installer files? Click OK. And now it should take you back to your WordPress site, and it'll tell you that it deleted all of those files. If you want to use your own site, all you need to do is use uh, use your files from last week in the word in that WordPress folder. Make sure it's your installer and your zip file. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Um, how did you go from the setting page back to the duplicator? Well, you should see a couple of tabs up on your web browser, hopefully, okay, uh, and then go back to WordPress. Thank you. So then you could, uh, file That's right. All right, so we should be back at, uh, at the dashboard of Victor's Bakery, my site. Uh, you would follow the same steps basically for your own site if you uh, choose to use that. Uh, and remember, when you're doing this at home, you don't need to recreate your site because you're already uh, using your site. So we'll continue in a moment. Just go back to dashboard here, and we will continue.
We always need to do that in this room, even when we do the advanced class next month. We'll always need to do this, and hopefully you're learning how to do it. We won't spend four and eight, five minutes on that. I will get through here as well. No, just click right here. Okay. There we go. Save the dashboard. No, no. What we did with cleanup is we cleaned up the uh, the duplicator files. We're cleaning up the uh, the archive file, not our posts and pages, our pictures, none of that. We're cleaning up the pieces when we installed the leftover pieces when we installed our site again. Okay, so um, okay, so we've uh, we've brought back our we've brought back our site. Let's address a few issues then that we uh, that we have that come along as a uh, as as WordPress users. Um, I see on the top left a little uh, spinning arrow and a number six. And if you're in the dashboard screen here, you might also see something that says updates, six. So this is, this is the fact of life about WordPress, that uh, every once in a while, there are updates to WordPress. There could be updates to your WordPress theme, to plugins, and to the whole WordPress code. Um, and that's actually what has happened recently. If you notice here at the top, ignore it for the moment, but at the top it says WordPress 4.0 is available. Please update. So uh, WordPress has graduated to version 4.0 in the last couple of weeks, I think. Two, two and a half weeks or so. And we, when we started this class, we were using WordPress 3.9.1, I think. And now they're on 4.0. So the whole foundation of WordPress has changed. So that's an update we need to talk about in a moment. And I want to see, well, what other updates are available? Uh, at the top here, click on click on that uh, spinning arrow there. At the, at the top, those are your, that's your notification that we have updates. So click on that. And so this screen tells me what my updates are. It tells me, first of all, there's an update to, to the version of WordPress that we're using. Okay. Below that, there's a section for plugins. So the following plugins have new versions available. So this one says that a Kismet. You have version 3.00, and, and the la latest version is 3.02. Duplicator. We have version one uh, 0 0.056, and now we've got 0.58. All right, and then scrolling down, we've got themes. The following themes have new versions. The 2014 theme, the 2013, and the 2012 theme. And it shows what versions we have and what versions are now available. So this is what I'm saying about WordPress. It, there's updates on a regular basis, but not all they're not all the same thing and you do not have to update all of them as a matter of fact I would recommend as a beginner don't do updates because you don't know exactly how that's going to change your site sometimes and I've experienced this that I update a plugin like a slideshow a slideshow that makes cool pictures appear and I update it from version 1.5 to 2.0 and then suddenly it doesn't work anymore because that is dependent on another plugin that has not been updated yet. So you don't quite know exactly all these how these changes are going to affect you. They try to tell you, for example, on Duplicator here, they try to tell you, check out what the details are of the update. But oftentimes these details will be pretty technical. I'm going to check that out, actually. I'll click View Version 058 for Duplicator if you want. It pops up to tell you. In this case, go check out our website. Okay, I'm gonna, let me do the Akismet. Here we go. 
So if you click on that uh, details for Akismet, it tells you in version 3.02, there's performance improvements. Everyone likes that. Fixed a bug that could truncate the comment data being sent to Akismet for checking. I don't know what that means. And then 3.01, remove dependency on PHP's FSOK open function. Again, this is going to tell you pretty technically what has been updated. And for a lot of us, this will be gibberish. What is, what is an FSOCK open function? So usually these updates improve things. Sometimes they don't. So if you were a complete beginner, I would say don't do your WordPress updates unless you have someone that works with you that kind of knows what they're doing. You guys, I believe, are actually a little bit higher than that because we've been talking now for about a month with WordPress, about WordPress, and also we've got a safety net. We've got Duplicator. The whole point of me introducing Duplicator to you is that this saves a perfect copy of your website at this point. So if we do all of these updates and we find there's some problem, just revert back to the original Duplicator uh, archive that we started with. How do you do that? Well, that's what we did earlier today. Oh. That whole process of upgrading the database and installing it. Just go back. Um, so that's why we, that's why I recommend uh, early on, let's use this Duplicator plugin because we'll do the updates right now. And if we run into issues, then we have a safety net. But people that come into this class and my other classes, and they've used WordPress a little bit, but they, they, they say, should I do my updates? Usually my answer is no. Why don't you have more experience? Now that you have more experience, at least knowing about reverting via duplicator, it's a little more safe to do. In the advanced class, then we'll talk about more things that we, that we should do related to updates. Um, but again, it's more advanced. So on this screen, uh, we'll do these updates, and the order to do them usually is... Uh, is uh, I'll tell you the order, then we'll actually do it. So make a note. Uh, the order that I would recommend is first do any WordPress updates. If you've got version 3.2, uh, take it to 3.8. First do the WordPress updates. Then do the theme updates. So your theme goes on top of WordPress. And then we would do the plugin updates because your plugins work inside of your theme, which works on top of WordPress. So that's my recommendation, and that's how we'll do it. We'll do the WordPress update first, then the themes, then the plugins. So we're going to graduate from version 3.9 to 4.0. So here, select Update Now. And what this does is it places your site in a sort of a maintenance mode. So if someone goes to your site, at this point they will see a message that says site is down for maintenance. So you have to decide, when should I do this? Perhaps not in the middle of the day when people are going to visit my site. Perhaps do it at 6 in the morning or 10 p.m. at night. Do it at some time. And for me, it happened right away. It's already finished. You, you too, probably. Depending on the speed of your site, your internet connection, it might take 5 minutes, 10 minutes, I don't know. So you want to do that WordPress update, any of these updates, at a time with less traffic to your site, usually at night. <coughs> So did everyone get the message, you have successfully updated WordPress, please log back in to see what's new. Okay, so go ahead and log in again. Uh, the username uh, again was admin and the password was happy cat. Yes? Your version of your site? Okay, uh, let me help you a little bit later on our first break. If you had my site set up, perhaps follow along on that first, and then we can go back to your site. So I'm going to select Log In. All right, so uh, this takes us to a screen that says, Welcome to WordPress 4.0. It gives you a screen about what's new, credits, and freedoms. 
Um, so just taking a quick overview here, manage your media with style, explore your uploads in a beautiful endless grid. So all of your pictures uh, are going to be in your media uh, screen, and what it says is that it used to be that it's going to show you 10 at a time or so, and then you go next page, 10 more, next page, 10 more, and if I've got 100 pictures, I'm going to be pressing next a lot. So now they've got it set up that it shows you your 10 pictures, and when you scroll down, it automatically shows you 10 more. You scroll down, it shows you 10 more. They've added new embeds, that is, new ways to add extra content, such as videos. They make it easier to add video content, audio content, with just a, a click and paste. It's getting smarter in that it knows that if you paste the link to a video, see this? They're, they're copying the link to a YouTube video, and then they're pasting it. It automatically captures the video and puts it on your page. That's new. You can do it with a tweet, you can do it with video. Uh, they're trying to make the editing smoother and more immersive. I don't exactly get the point in their little video, but I'm sure we'll notice when we actually do it. Uh, it keeps the formatting tools available at all times. Okay, I guess some of these panels that might disappear as you're writing, they always they always appear for you. Plugins. They've redone their plugin uh, marketplace. It, it's a little bit more user-friendly and such, um, which I think is pretty useful. And then other stuff under the hood, so the technical stuff. If you, if you know about jQuery and such, they've updated to the latest versions and all of that. So this is, a, this is interesting here. Don't play the video, but uh, this is uh, WordPress 4.0 Benny. They actually, uh, WordPress likes to, uh, likes to um, uh, code name their different releases. And we can go look up what the names are, but these are the names of jazz musicians, actually. So Armstrong is in there, uh, Django, and now we've got Benny. So uh, don't play the video, let me play it for a moment. But uh, <coughs> this gives us a little preview <coughs> of what's new in WordPress. WordPress 4.0 Benny, named after jazz great Benny Goodman, is all about deepening the seamless experience of creating, managing, and publishing your content. When you next use the editor to publish a post or page, you'll notice that everything you need, from the toolbar to your publishing options, stays at your fingertips, however far into the post you go. That means less scrolling and more focus in creating your work. In older versions of WordPress, embedding media meant previewing or publishing to see how it would look on your site. In 4.0, when you add a link for, let's say, a YouTube video, the video appears right there in your post. And the same goes for tweets and other embeddable media. So when you hit publish, there are no surprises. Finding new ways to enhance and expand on what you're... All right, so you can watch that on your own, but basically it's telling you what's in the, in the text area. Um, so these are the updates. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. When I did that on my Mac, it automatically downloaded 4.0, so I don't get the screen with all the updates. How to find that screen That's the funny thing. I think you see it, you either see it or you don't. Mm -hmm. If you see it once and ma navigate away from it, I don't. I I haven't found a way to find it either. I would have assumed it would have been under dashboard somewhere, but uh, yeah. Uh, if I go if I go anywhere else and try to find it, uh, I don't know where it's at. So I don't know. They make it like um, it goes away and you missed it. But it could be on the website. And, uh, yeah, you could try. You could try that on WordPress.org, and, and maybe somewhere there it'll it'll give you that same uh, welcome screen. That's kind of odd. But um, all right, so those are our updates. We did we updated the core WordPress code. Uh, next, we'll go back to our update screen and update the themes. So let's go back to let's select up here again the updates. And this tells me that, that my three, these three themes that I have installed need an update. 
Now here's the thing though. Um, we're going to update all three of these, but uh, logically, why would we update themes that we're not using? So WordPress is always behind the scenes checking, is there a new, is there a new theme? Is there a new plugin? Is there a new WordPress core? So your site will be a little more efficient if you use the minimal amount of content. For example, I, we've got these three themes, 2012, 13, and 14. We're only using 2013. We're, not, we're never going to use 2012, and we probably won't use 2014. So those two themes are always going to be checking the mothership. Are there new updates? Are there new updates? Are there new updates? Mm -hmm. And we're never going to use them. So it's sort of, I think, inefficient to have themes that you're not going to use. So let's do these updates, and then I'll deal with that issue in a moment. Uh, let's click on the top here to select all. Right, select all, and then select update themes. So it's going to connect to WordPress.org, download all the latest versions, install them, and now they're 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 updated. Great. And now, next, a month from now, six months from now, whatever, you might have new versions of those three themes again. And since, and since a month since, I have not touched 2013 and 2011, so let's actually deal with this. Let's uh, remove themes that we're not using. This should speed up your site a bit, especially if you downloaded 10 of them and you're only using one. All 10 of those are going to be checking for updates. So let's go over to Appearance menu. themes and perhaps in version 4.1 they will make this a little easier I want to remove the themes that uh, I'm not using and actually we're using 2014 as the active one okay we'll stay with 2014 um, but uh, I don't I don't want 20 and I can always re-download them we're gonna remove them and we can always download them again if we want they're free remember but I want to remove them and there's no easy button to, to select them and press remove you have to do it this way uh, hover over 2012 put your mouse over 2012 and you'll see theme details click that and then you'll see on the bottom right corner delete so if you've got 20 of these themes and you only need one, you're going to have to do a lot of clicking. So perhaps in the next version they will make a select box. But here you want to click delete at the bottom right. It's going to confirm, click OK. Alright, so now you've got 2014 and 2013 left. I'm going to remove 2013 same way. Click theme details, delete. So now we've only got one theme, less overhead. Only one theme will be checking the mothership to find out if there are new updates. So knowing this, we should apply this as well to our plugins. We can download as many plugins as we want again, but if we're not using them, even if they're deactivated, they're still going to be checking for updates. So let's check our plugins to see if there's any we don't need. Click on your plugins, uh, your plugins menu item. And so you might have a lot of plugins, and here's a way to manage them at the top. Uh, notice I've got five in total, four are active, one is inactive, and uh, two have updates available. So what I would do is uh, click on the inactive tab here, and in our case we've got one that is inactive, and if you um, use WordPress and download many plugins but not really use them, uh, check your inactive screen here. And so this plugin, which, which comes built in with, um, with WordPress, actually by the inventor of WordPress, 
in that moment way. Um, is is like um, I don't know what it is. It's a plugin. I don't know what it does. I've never really played with it. It's just there as a sort of um, proof of concept. It randomly puts a lyric from Hello Dolly on the upper right side of your admin screen. So if you want a random song lyric at the top right, turn on that plugin. Now we we we're not going to use this plugin at all. So uh, we should remove it because. Again, it's going to use up our bandwidth and our resources that it's going to check every month or whatever. Is there a version 1.7? So to remove an up uh, to remove a plugin here is pretty easy. We can select delete. It'll confirm here. Couple of questions. Uh, depending on the plugin, it may be saving data. Like if we're using a uh, if we're using the duplicator plugin and we don't want it anymore. We can, if we select yes, delete files, it'll delete any files that Duplicator created, not just the plugin itself. But then um, you can say um, no, you know, cancel it. Uh, you can see a list of everything that will be deleted there. In this case, just hello PHP. But select yes, delete these files. <coughs> Takes us back to our plugin screen. And as an overview, we've got a kismet, which we want. That helps us prevent spam. We want duplicator, we, that one because it archives our site, gives us that safety net. We want jetpack, because that gives us all of these great extra features, uh, like comments and publish size and just a lot of features. And WordPress SEO, we want that one, because that one helps us uh, manage our SEO settings a lot easier. So we want all of these plugins, but you'll have to, if you've been using WordPress for a while, you want to do an audit of your plugins. Am I even using this plugin? I downloaded it and it was nice, but I found a better one, and I haven't used that old plugin in three months. Might as well delete it because it's going to keep complaining that there's a new version. So these that we've got here are the ones we're going to keep. Let's go back up to. We can do it from this screen, but we'll do it from the centralized updates screen. Go back up to the updates updates screen. And now it says that there's two plugins of it available to update. Go ahead and select them and update them. One of the reasons why when we first started the class, I think when we first started the class, they had just updated to 4.0, and a couple of people asked, do we need to update to 4.0? And in the beginning, I said, no, not yet. And now as we've used uh, WordPress more, and I've been talking about the pros and cons of this, here's another thing that we notice here. Compatibility with WordPress 4.0? Well, you don't want to update to 4.0 without checking if your plugins are compatible with 4.0. If you look at it and it says that it's compatible with 4.0 at 58%, I don't want to be part of that percentage where it doesn't work for me. So always check that. Update plugins. You should see your updates get, your plugins get updated. You'll go back to return to WordPress updates. Everything's updated. Go back to your uh, home screen. And now at this point, uh, let's take a short break. We've uh, resurrected the site again. We've done our updates. And now uh, we'll take a 10-minute break. When we come back, we'll work more with, uh, with WordPress.